Welcome back everyone. I was playing around with the halftone filter in Affinity Photo yesterday, when I discovered how to turn an image like this into what looks like a marble or maybe a bowling ball without the holes. I thought maybe some of you would be interested in how I did it. I started with a blank canvas and then went to my shapes drop down, chose a rectangle and then dragged my cursor across the canvas to draw it out. Then, I used the sliders on the color wheel panel to change the color from white to a nice dark blue. With the layer selected, I then went to layers in the menu and scrolled down to convert to curves. Next, I clicked on the top right corner node and then pressed the delete key to turn this rectangle into a triangle. Next, I clicked Command or Control J to duplicate this layer. And then I grabbed the little handlebar at the top of this new layer and used it to rotate the new triangle around so that it opposed the first triangle. I went back to the color wheel and colored that one a deep shade of red. Then I clicked on the gradient tool in the left hand toolbar and dragged my cursor from the top right down to the bottom left to create a nice red to black gradient. Next, I selected the blue triangle and used the gradient tool to drag nice blue to black gradient in the opposite direction. I then went to my halftone tool I put on my toolbar. It looks like a bunch of colorful dots. If you haven't done this already, you can go to view in the menu, scroll down to customize tools near the bottom and drag the icon onto your own toolbar. By the way, for the halftone to work, the layer needs to be a pixel layer. So you'll see the assistant message pop up indicating that Affinity has rasterized the layer for you. Okay, the next thing I did was select both layers by holding the shift key while clicking on each of them. I then right clicked on the layers and selected merge visible. This joined the two layers into a new single pixel layer. Like I said, I was just playing around experimenting with Affinity Photo. I wondered what would happen if I warped this image a bit. So I decided to try the twirl tool on it. To do this, I went to the filters button at the bottom of the layers panel and scrolled down to twirl. Then I clicked a point near the center of the image. To give it a good twirl, I first raised the radius slider all the way up and then I slid the angle slider up too. This produced a really cool spiral effect. Okay. The next thing I did was go back to my shapes drop down and select ellipse. I placed my cursor at the center of the image and held command or control plus the shift key while dragging outward to form a perfectly centered circle. Then I clicked on the merged layer and held it while I dragged the layer onto the circle shape. This embedded the twirl effect on top of the circle. I then thought to myself, why stop here? Let's warp it some more. So. I right-clicked on the circle and scrolled down to rasterize to put the image onto a single pixel layer. Then I went up to the top left corner and clicked on the Liquify Persona button located to the right of the Affinity Photo logo. I chose the Liquify Pinch tool, which applies a concave spherical distortion within the brush stroke. You can make the size of the circular stroke bigger or smaller using the right or left square bracket keys. I centered the little crosshairs in the middle and then clicked and held until I said, wow, this looks kind of like a little marble I used to have. So I decided to remove the marble-like image from the rest. To do this, I grabbed the elliptical marquees tool from the left toolbar. Then I placed my cursor near the center of the image and held shift plus command while I dragged outward. This gave me a perfectly circular and centered selection. Then I clicked Command or Control plus X to cut the center out of the image. Then I turned off the two triangle layers by clicking the little dots to their right. I think this ring that I have left is also pretty cool. I might use it later for something, so I'll just turn it off too, and then click Command or Control V to paste my little marble back onto the canvas. Next, I want to give my little marble a shadow to make it look a bit more realistic. To do this, I'll click Command or Control J to duplicate the marble. Then I'll right click on the lower marble and scroll down to transform and then flip vertical. This will create a mirror image which I'll move down a bit below the top marble. 
Then, I'll click the Live Filters button at the bottom of the Layers panel and select Gaussian Blur. I'll slide that slider up quite a bit to give it a nice blur. OK, I think that this actually looks pretty good the way it is. But maybe I can make it better. So, I'm going to keep playing. I want to make a little horizon line. So, I'll click on the Pen tool on the left-hand toolbar and draw a straight line across the canvas. Then, I'll drag and drop the layer under the two marbles. Next, I want to apply a bit of a blur to the line. To do this, I first need to right-click on the line and then scroll down to Rasterize. Then, I'll click the Live Filters button again and select Gaussian Blur. I'll move the slider a bit to the right and, yeah, that looks pretty good. I won't bore you with the rest. I'll admit that I had a hard time stopping myself. I wanted to see what the marble would look on a blue surface, so I added a rectangle shape with the blue gradient on it. And that looked good too. But I thought it needed a new background, so then I inserted a sky behind the whole thing. Then I blurred the sky a bit with a Gaussian blur. Then I turned the marble into a planet. Then a bowling ball. And then a weird looking bug. All right, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.